So this next series of videos is going to build out the devices that are going to be common for the construction of our data path. This is the full computer that we're going to be building. First, we're going to build what we call combinational devices, which means the output is just a combination of the inputs. It's the kind of devices we've been building so far. There is no memory involved. The output is the same if the input is the same standard stuff. Uh, so there are a number of devices like this where we want the output to be the same every time the input is the same. And the first one of these that we're going to build is a device to add two numbers together. We're going to call this an adder and it's going to be the sort of foundation for all of the mathematics that our computer is going to do. So we'll start with what does it mean to add two binary numbers? Well, if we have two binary numbers A and B, then we can add them together and we can say, well, either there's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are the four possibilities. And we can say, what is the sum if we add these together? Well, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is uh, 2. But we can't put 2 in the column, so we have to find some other way to do this. Well, what we're going to do, if you remember back to um, you know grade 3 math, when you're adding two numbers together, if the result is too big to fit in the column, if it's 10 or more, then you carry the 1 to the next column. And we'll do the same thing here. So 2 is in fact going to be 0, carry the 1. Where do we put that 1? Well, we'll need another output to say when we have a carry. It'll be 0 here, 0 here, 0 here, and 1 there. There you go. Two numbers, we add them together, the result can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Let's build out a circuit for these. While the carry is fairly easy, that's just AND. If we have A and we have B, then the carry is just A and B, which looks like this, A and B. And then the sum uh, is going to be, I don't know if you can recognize that, but if you go back into your notes or even have a look at some of the other things, this is in fact exclusive OR. It's one or the other, but not both. And so that looks like this. There's an exclusive OR here. And again, we put this here, and this one comes here, and this is the carry, and this is the sum, and this is a nice little circuit that we call actually a half adder. Why do we call this a half adder? Well, we'll see in a second. This is a half adder. And that's because if we actually take this device, take this math, and try to build out an addition system that is going to do more than one bit, we'll see that we have a problem. And some of you may already have detected what might happen. Let's take two numbers, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, and we'll add, which is what, 8, uh, no 4s, 9, 10, 11. This is 11. And we want to add 1 to this to make it 12. So we'll add 1 to this. Uh, and we'll add those two to together. And we expect. Uh, that the answer will be 12. So let's add these two together. 1 plus 1, well, we already saw. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. That's fine. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. Now we have 1 plus 0, which is here. 1 plus 0 is 1. But we haven't taken into account how to deal with this carry. I mean, we could just say that this is the same as 1 plus 1. But you can imagine a situation where you have 1 plus 1 with a carry in of 1. So we're going to need some way in this circuit, in this, in this logic, to account for what happens when there's a carry in to a column. Let's finish this math out. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0, carry the 1. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, no carry. 1 plus 0 is 1, and the answer is in fact 12 as we expect. So this is how we're going to actually do math in the bigger computer. We're going to have a string of bits all collected together, and we're going to throw a bunch of half adders at them, or in fact, half adders aren't going to be good enough, as we've seen, because we need to deal with carry. We're going to throw a bunch of adders at them all together. They're all going to be linked together, and we're going to get a big end up result. Okay, so let's turn this half adder into a full adder, an adder that can deal with carry in. Let's go back to our original truth table. And we're going to say what happens if there's a carry as an input. Okay, we're going to add an input to this table. Uh, we'll better distinguish between these two carries, because otherwise we'll be confused. So this is the carry out carry out, and then there will be a carry in, which is going to be a carry in from a previous column, and then a carry out to a previous column. So we'll extend this table by another four rows and say what happens 
And now we already know this is what happens if the carry in is zero because we've already dealt with that situation because implicitly there is no carry in these unless there is. So now we're going to build out the same situation when there is a, when there is a carry. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now what happens when there is a carry? It's two outputs still should be enough. Let's find out. So when we have 0 plus 0 carry a 1, that's 1 with a no carry out. 0 plus 1, carry in the 1, is 2. Again, it's 0, carry the 1 to the next column, which makes it 2. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. And then 1 plus 1, with a carry in, is going to be 3, which is 1, carry the 1. Okay? So that is going to be our complete table for our full adder, which can handle carry in and carry out. Um, if you look at this, if you were to flip these two columns, you could see that the output, which is carry out and sum, is just the binary code for what happens when you add these three numbers together now, right? Because one and one and one is three, and that's the binary code for three. One and one is two, and if you flip those, that's the binary code for two. Two, one, two, one, one, and zero. We're just counting the number of ones that are in our input. Awesome. All right, let's build out now the full adder. Now, this is going to take a little bit more work. We won't be able to just look at the table and say what it is. We'll have to actually use our Carnot maps. So let's use a Carnot map for uh, the carry out first. Why not? Carry out. We got three inputs. We got a carry in, and we've got A and B, and we can draw our Carnot map as we have. Looks like this. Don't forget to label. 0, 0, 0, 1, and we flip the last two columns. And then we can just read it off of the truth table. 0, 0, 0, and 1, flipping the last two columns. And then 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1. And now we can group them together. You'll see that there are, in fact, three groups. There's a group here, there's a group here, and there's a group here. And those three groups then equate to the carry out being equal to, well, we can look here. This is A, B. And we can look here, this one here is AC, AC in, and then this one here is BC in. That's our uh, function for our uh, carry out. Uh, and I've got some, where did all my pens go? I've got some colors here just so we can identify and indicate which ones are which. Uh, this one here is AB, that's the blue one. Uh, and then this one here, the orange one, uh, is A, C, N. And then the pink one is B, C, N. Those are the three terms, and those are the three uh, resulting terms in the logical function. So that's what we've got for our Carnot map for our full adder to carry out. One more to do, which is the Carnot map for the full adder for the sum. Okay, so we'll look at the rows on the truth table for the sum, make another Carnot map. This one is for sum, put that down here. And again, we've got a carry in and we've got a B. Those are our three inputs. We'll draw out our Carnot map. Whoops. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now we'll look at our truth table for the sum and we'll read it down. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Looks like this. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is um, a little disheartening <laughs> because there's no groups that we can make, right? There's no pairs or powers of two collections of ones that we could group together that would make it simpler. So in this case, all we can do is just read off the individual terms, one, two, three, and four. Uh, we'll just read them off and then we'll just hope for the best. So this is the sum and this is equal to uh, A prime B prime C or A prime B C prime a prime B C prime and again the C in the input is actually carry in so we'll make sure that we remember that 
And then the third term, this one here, is ABC. And the fourth term here is AB prime C prime. Those are our four terms, and we might be done. But if you look at some of the notes that we had before and some of our conversations around um, Carnot maps, you might recall that there are some circumstances where we have a pattern like this, which is a checkerboard pattern. You might be able to find some efficiencies in an exclusive OR, uh, which makes sense because back here, for a half adder, we had exclusive OR as well. So we might think to ourselves, there might be some exclusives ORs there. So we'll take the terms and we'll look at them and we'll say, maybe we can take some exclusive OR. So let's take the first two terms and we'll pull A prime out of here. And the result is B prime C or B C prime. Uh, and that's already, you can maybe notice that that's an exclusive OR. And then the last two terms are A, B, C, or B prime, C prime, and lo and behold, we have two exclusive ORs. This is equivalent to, let's move this up a little bit, um, this is equivalent to A prime, B exclusive, or C, or A, B exclusive, nor C, right? Because this is exclusive nor, that's exclusive OR. And then finally, we can even go one step further and say, this is not bad. This is a prime something or a the same something prime, which is again exclusive or. And so this is a exclusive or b exclusive or c. And that's nice. That's a nice, simple expression uh, for our sum, which makes sense. Because if you look back at our table, it kind of looks like what two exclusive ors together might look like. Exclusive or. This is exclusive nor, put those together, and you might have uh, exclusive or throughout the whole thing, which we do. So let's build out our circuits then. The two circuits are the, um, if we have again, A and B, and then we have a carry in here somewhere, then what we've got is first of all, the sum, let's do the sum first. We're gonna have B exclusive or C, And then we're going to exclusive or that with A. And then the carry is going to be, as we saw before here, AB, AC, BC. And that we can have um, a big OR gate for three AND gates. Here's an AND gate, an AND gate, an AND gate, A, B. That one through here, and then A, C, that one can go there, and then B, C, like that. It's a little messy, but let's see what we get. So that is our carry out. This is our sum. So this is what we call a full adder. But let's think about this just one more minute because. A half adder adds two numbers together. And a full adder is adding two numbers and then adding the carry. So maybe we could just take two half adders and put them together and make ourselves a full adder. Now, it kind of looks like we could do that because there's two exclusive or gates in here. There's two and gates. They're a little not exactly the same. Let's take our exclusive or um, pattern from our full adder. And let's see if we might be able to identify a place where there's exclusive or somewhere in our carry out. Because our full our sum is two exclusive ors. Maybe there's an exclusive or in our carry out somewhere. Let's look here. I'm going to use a different color here. And I'm going to say, what if we were to look at these two terms here? So this is going to be a slightly different simplification. I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to say this is equal to, the orange term is the same, A, C, in, right? The orange term is the same, A, C, in. But then these two terms are going to be, uh, this is A prime B, C, A prime B, C. And this term is A, B, C prime. And we can look at this and say this is a prime bc and this is uh, 
a uh, b c prime and we can say that if we factor out the c this is a c in or b and then a prime c a c prime a exclusive or c and lo and behold we've got a exclusive or c we've got now this here down here if we simplify this in a different order, we can find that this is actually the same as, and I'll leave that as an exercise, uh, A exclusive or B exclusive or C, which is the same as B exclusive or A exclusive or C. In fact, you can simplify these in any order. The result will be the same, and I'll leave that as an exercise. Particularly, we want to factor B out from these two and get A prime C prime A C and B prime out of these two, and we get A prime C, A C prime, and those all together give us B exclusive or A exclusive or C. And if we say over here we've got B A exclusive or C, what we're noticing is that the exclusive or is common. And if we take that exclusive or, and if we take the and, we can put them together and build a circuit that is actually going to be two half adders put together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take A exclusive or C. So we're going to have A, B, and C. And we're going to take from here A exclusive or C. Because we're going to add basically A and C together first. And then we're going to take the result and add it to B. A exclusive or C. And we're going to uh, take that is going to be the first stage. And then the carry for A exclusive or C is going to be A, C, right? Uh, because that's what we saw. So this is the carry for that. And this is, again, A. And we'll put this one here, C. So that's a half adder, right? A and C, A exclusive or C. That's awesome. Now we're going to take A exclusive or C, exclusive or it with B, A exclusive or C, and we're going to exclusive or it with B. We'll bring B through here, and we'll have an exclusive OR. It's going to be this. Okay, and we're going to take A exclusive or C and AND it with B. Uh, whoops, that was the wrong one. A exclusive or C and AND it with B. And again, it's a little messy because I'm just drawing this out. <laughs> But what you can see then, and I'll, I'll put this in red, is we've got two little half adders put together. Okay? Now, is that the result? A, C, where's A, C? A and C, we need to build that one out. That's there. And we need to OR that with B and A exclusive OR C. So where's the B and A exclusive OR C? That's here. So we need to take this. I did need that. And we need to OR those together. And that's going to be our carry out. And these, we've already got those, B exclusive or A exclusive or C. That's this. That's our sum. So all we have to do is take those two carries, or them together, and that's our final carry. Take these two sums and exclusive or them together, and that's our sum. Now I'm going to bring in another picture here, which is from our uh, another derivation from the notes. And you can see um, that what we get is two half adders. And then if we OR the carries together, and that kind of makes sense, because if you carry from one, carry from the other, if either of those are true, then we'll carry out. And it looks like two half adders, which makes sense, because it's a full adder. Full adder should be two half adders, because we're adding A and B together, and then we're adding C to it. In this example, we're adding X and Y together, and then we're adding C to it. So now we've got a full adder for one bit. Now the key is to take a bunch of them together, string them all together so that the carry out from one is the carry into the next, and we get uh, this. We're going to put the full adder in a box, like that, <laughs> and then we're going to string them all together, and now we can make an adder that is as big as we would like uh, just by stringing them together. We carry in a zero at the very bottom end, and the last carry out is the last bit for our answer. Uh, because it's possible to take two four-bit numbers and get a five-bit result, uh, give it a try. So that is the full construction, why we call it a half adder, why we call it a full adder, the full construction for a multi-bit adder that will add any two binary numbers together. Now you don't have to add anymore.